So you're sitting in school, and you're wondering to yourself, why am I here with all of these students, some of which aren't even really like me? Why are we all here learning the same stuff anyways? Well, you're here, and they're all here, because some people, including a man, a Horace man to be exact, had what they believed to be the answer to a big question. Can and should schools be the great equalizers of society? The answer to this question, in the educational world at least, manifested itself in America as the common school era from 1820 to 1865. Remember that Horace Mann mentioned earlier? He was a major figure in the movement for common schools. Usually, only children from families of wealthier socioeconomic standings could afford to be sent to private schooling at the time. Mann argued that common schools, or schools funded by the state's taxpayers' dollars, should be installed to give an educational opportunity to children of all economic classes. Thus, man felt that these common schools could be the great equalizers within society. Urban and working-class citizens, as well as many humanitarians, were in support of this push. The upper-class aristocrats and elites, who tended to pay more taxes, were, unsurprisingly, against the idea. Man posed to them, however, that the taxes to support common schools would be a cheap but beneficial investment since they would educate the future workers of the economy within society. Once common schools were put into wide practice, with the first state-supported high school, the Boston English Classical School, being established in 1821, children from all social classes had better access to education. Even the African-American students? No, not those students, said society, trying to be more equalized. In places where slavery was still legal, it was often illegal to teach slaves to read and write. Elsewhere, and even after the abolishment of slavery, students of color were segregated into separate schools, under the court justification that they were still equal while being in separate establishments. For the standard common schools, however, students from different walks of life could expect to be taught with materials such as the W.H. McGreffey Reader's Books. These would not only teach them to read from a first to sixth grade reading level, but were meant to teach them ethic and religious influences that were held as values at the time, as well as morals such as honesty, hard work, and obedience. What the schools didn't want to expose students to, however, were more pessimistic worldviews and pessimistic views for children. With these books, teachers were lecturers who helped to guide children morally so that the students could learn and be ethically influenced while they were in the classroom. Speaking of teachers, another factor Horace Mann pushed for in the common school era in America were public normal schools. Public normal schools would require teachers of common schools to have an education higher than that of just a high school degree, with the first one opening in Lexington, Massachusetts in 1839. Along with normal subjects, such as reading, writing, and arithmetic, these normal schools also taught the teachers the subject of pedagogy to better prepare them for their profession. The spread of the common school movement saw a more widespread effect with the American westward expansion at the time as well. With the Moral Land Grant Act, each state was given a subsidy of 30,000 acres of land from the federal government to raise money for public higher education establishments such as colleges. Providing a total of $7.5 million in the long run towards higher education, the Moral Land Grant Act helped get the federal U.S. government involved in the common education within the United States. So now, you may know why it is that you were given the opportunity to sit in public schooling amongst all of these other students from different walks of life. But wait, you may ask. That's fine and noble and all, but what's the point for kids to have the opportunity of school if they're just forced to go every day anyways? Whose smart idea was that? 